cow! How is he? Is he coming out? I'll go, Mother. What's the matter? What is it, John? He won't do it. Anything I can do, Miss Cree? No, thank you. Doesn't that bird brain of yours ever function? Four more cablegrams and more packages. Dad is going crazy upstairs, that bell ring all the time. Oh, dear. Uh, June, will you go? What did you say, Richard? One's from New York and the other's from San Francisco. There was something from Alaska early this morning. Yes, yes, that's right. Who is Don't you? call yourself a doctor in my presence! Really? Well, I'm waiting. I'll get them right away. He wants some Players Club cigarettes. <laughs> Players Club? They have them at Kitchener's. I'll run down and get them. No, I'm sorry. Tell me, Miss Green, is he... Are they bringing him out soon? Uh, we're getting him out of bed now. Ooh, ooh. Thank you. Rock like a rat in this hellhole! Two o'clock? Yes, I think he gets off then. All right. Well, who do you think that was? Mr. H.G. Wells from London. H.G. Wells? On our telephone? I know. You know, he... I'll go. This is certainly a busy house. That fine, Sarah. Is it fresh? Yes, ma'am. You move like a broken down truck horse. His voice is just the same as on the radio. Good morning. Girls, what do you think? They're bringing him out this morning. You don't mean it. Can we say you see him? Why, he'd love it. Girls, what do you think just happened? I'll be upstairs, Mother, if you want me. That's fine, June. Uh, please tell your father to come down. Mr. Whiteside is coming out. Yes, I will. Is he really coming out this morning? I brought him this plant. Do you think it's all right if I give it to him? It's lovely. And some caps with jelly. How nice. Girls, who do you think was on the phone just now? H.G. Wells from London. And look at these cablegrams. He's been getting messages from all over the country and Europe. The New York Times, the Mount Wilson Observatory, Felix Frankenfurter, Dr. Daffo. It's so busy, I simply can't tell you what's been going on. I'm exhausted. There's a piece about it in this week's Times. Did you see it? No. Really? You're an incident too, Daisy. Listen. Portly Sheridan Whiteside. Critic, lecturer, wit, radio orator, friend of the great and near great. Last week found celebrated wit no weapon with which to combat an injured hip. The Falstaffian Mr. Whiteside, trekking across the country on one of his annual lecture tours, met his Waterloo in the shape of a small piece of ice on the doorstep of Mr. and Mrs. Ernest W. Stanley of Methalia, Ohio. Result? Canceled lectures and disappointment to thousands of adoring club women in Omaha, Denver, and Point West. Further result? Mr. Whiteside rests until further notice in the home of surprised Mr. and Mrs. Stanley. Possibility? Christmas may be postponed this year. What's that mean? A small patch of ice on the doorstep of Mr. and Mrs. Think of it. Of course, if it were my house, Daisy, I have a bronze plate put on the step right where he fell. Well, of course I feel terrible about it. He just never agrees to go to dinners anywhere, and he finally agreed to come here. And then this had to happen? Poor Mr. Whiteside. But it will be wonderful having him with, his, having him with us, even for just a little while. Think of it. We'll sit around in the evenings and discuss books and plays, all the great people he's known, and he'll talk in that wonderful way of his. He may even read Goodbye, Mr. Chips, to us. Daisy, I can't wait any longer. Mr. White said, oh, good morning, ladies. Good morning. Ernest, what do you think? They're bringing him out this morning. And H.G. Wells, telephone from London. And we're in time. Look. Oh, I, I don't like this kind of publicity at all, Daisy. When do you suppose he's going to leave? Well, he has had quite a shock, Ernest. He's only getting up this morning after being in bed for two full weeks. He'll certainly have to rest a few days. Oh, well, I suppose it is a great honor having him in the house, but it is a little upsetting. Bells going all the time, phones ringing, messenger boys running in and out. Pardon me, Mrs. Stanley. Have the cigarettes come yet? Uh, my son just went for them. Thank you. Uh, this is Miss Cutler, Mr. Whiteside's secretary. How do you do? May I move this chair? You mean... He's coming out now. He is indeed. He's coming out. I can hardly wait. June, June, Mr. Whiteside is coming out. Sir, Mr. Whiteside's coming out. I'm so excited. I simply don't know what to do. Me too. I know you'll simply just. Uh, 
Good morning, Dr. Bradley. Oh, good morning, good morning. Oh, well, here we are, merry and bright. Uh, bring a little patient out, Miss Breen. Too much to ask for you to just glance over a while while you're here? Traps. No. Well, it just so happens that I have a copy with me. The story of a humble practitioner, or 40 years in Ohio's up. Oh. I shall waste no time in reading it, if you know what I mean. Oh, thank you. I do hope you like it. Well, I'll see you on the morrow. And keep that hip quiet now, and don't forget. Don't forget to take those little pills. Goodbye. Oh, Maggie, will you take 40 years below the navel or whatever you call Well, Sherry, I must say, you certainly have acted with all of your accustomed grace and charm. Look here, puss, I'm in mo no mood to discuss my behavior, good or bad. I had no desire to cross this cheerless threshold. I was hounded and badgered into it. And now, after weeks of racking pain, you accuse me of behaving without charm? 
Were you happy you kissed them? Very well, Sherry. I should have known better after ten years than to try and do anything about your manners. But when I'm through with this job, I may write a book about it all. Through the years with Prince Charming. Listen, Repulsive, you're tied to me with an umbilical cord made of piano wire. And now, if we may dismiss the subject of my charm, which incidentally I earned fourteen hundred dollars of an appearance, possibly we could begin work. Oh, goodness. What is it? My name is Harriet Stanley. I know you are very nice, I found a trolley free by the pines, but I remembered what you had said about Jeff and Judy Obscure. He was the nicest present I could think to bring you. Oh. <laughs> For God's sake, what was that? That was Mr. Stanley's sister, Harriet. I have talked to her a few times. She's quite strange. Strange? She's where are the hounds of the Baskervilles? Say, I've seen that face somewhere before. Nonsense. You couldn't have. Huh. Oh, well, down to work. Ah, oh, you're trusted in the doctor's book. Oh, wait, well, um, what date is this? December 10th. Thank There's you. some telegrams. Wonderful. You no know, reason to be endorsing made in four brassiers. Um, ah, send a cable to Columbia Broadcasting. For Christmas Eve broadcast, I will have for the New York studio. I shall return east instead of returning to Hollywood. White sign. Are you sure you'll be all right by Christmas, sir? Oh, okay, I fine. Send a cable to Mahatma Gandhi in Bombay, India. Dear Boo Boo, schedule change. Can you meet me, Calcutta, July 12th? Dinner 8.30, white side. Or the editor of the Atlantic Monthly. Dear Stinky, don't worry, copy will arrive, white side. Say, Arturo Tuscanini, where is he? I'll find him. Counting on you for January 4th, Metropolitan Opera House, my annual benefit for the home for the paroled convicts. As you know, this is a very worthy cause and close to my heart. Will you have quiet dinner with me and Ethel Barrymore afterwards? Whiteside. For Mrs. Stanley, tell them she's too drunk to talk. Hello? What? Hollywood? It's Goldwyn, hang up. Oh, hello, Banjo! Banjo, give me that phone! Banjo, how are you, darling? Come on, give me the phone! Shut up, Sherry. What? I miss you, Banjo. Stop dribbling and give me the phone! Oh, he's going to live. In fact, he's screaming at me now. Here he is. Banjo, your phone's behind! <laughs> How are you? Oh, yes, I'm all right. Oh, no. No, I've got the best horse doctor in town. Uh-huh. Yes. How's the picture coming? An hour wacko and sloppo. Ah. Uh, yes, having any fun? Playing any cribbage? Oh. No. <laughs> Well, don't take all the money. Leave a little for me. Your what? Having your portrait painted? By who? Milk Gross? No. All right, well, yes. I can't spend all day talking Hollywood riffraff. Kiss Luella Parsons for me. Goodbye. <laughs> he took $1,400 from Sam Goldwyn in cribbage last night. When he was done, Sam said, Banjo, I'll never play garbage with you again. <laughs> What's all this about having his portrait painted? Oh, yes, just with the face of his needs. <laughs> Salvador Dali, a surrealist to paint it. What do you want now, Miss Bedpan? It's your medicine. Why don't we 45 minutes? <sighs> Get to work. Here's a telegram from that dear friend of yours, Lorraine Sheldon. Sherry, my poor sweet lamb, oh. have been in Scotland on a shooting party with Lord and Lady Cunard, and only just heard of your poor sweet hip. Oh! Come down here in Surrey with Lord Bottom, sailing Wednesday on the Normandy, and cannot wait to see my poor sweet Sherry. Your blossom, girl, Lorraine. In the words of the master, I'm a vomit. <laughs> Don't be bitter just because she's more beautiful than you are. Lorraine Sheldon is a very fair example of that small but vicious circle you move in. <clears throat> Pure sex jealousy if I've ever seen it. Give me the rest of those. Lorraine Sheldon, Lord Bottomley, 
My Aunt Fanny. Thoughts from Destiny's Tots. Oh, England's little rover boy. Mm. Dear baby's breath, what is this I hear about a hip fracture in some bordello brawl? <laughs> Does this mean our Hollywood Christmas party is off? Just finished the new play in Pago Pago. It's superb. Myself and a ukulele leave Honolulu tomorrow, in that order. Sincerely, Oscar Wilde. Huh. He does travel, doesn't he? Yeah. You know, it would be nice if the world went around Beverly Carlton for a change. Say, I need to stop over on his way to New York. Send him a cable. Beverly Carlton, Royal Hawaiian Hotel, Honolulu. These people intend to have their friends rushing in and out of here while I'm working. What would you have them do? Use a rope ladder? I will not have a bunch of mildew pus bags going in and out of here. Slavery, go away. Oh, Mr. Whiteside, <laughs> Albert Jefferson of the Revolutionary Journal. Get rid of him. I'm sorry, Mr. Whiteside has seen no one. Really? Yes, so if you'll excuse us, good day. Mr. Whiteside seems to be sitting up and taking notice. I'm afraid he's not taking notice of anybody from the Mezzalia Journal. So, do you mind? You know, it's going to be insulted. I'd like it to be by Mr. Whiteside himself. I never did like carbon copies. Oh, touche. And Mezzalia, too. Maggie, dear. Will you please leave? How about an interview, Mr. Whiteside? I never give them go away. Mr. Whiteside, if I don't get this interview, I'll lose my job. That would be quite all right with me. And you don't mean that, Mr. Whiteside? You used to be a newspaper man yourself. You know what an interview is like. Who minds the toughest one that ever lived? You won't get around me that way. If you don't like him, get off the paper. Yes, but I happen to think it's a good paper. William R. Mike could have gone out of the you, but he didn't. You have the effrontery in front of me to compare yourself to William Allen White. Only in the sense of White staying in Florida. And I want to stay here and stay what I want to stay. Such as what? Well, I can't really put it into words, Mr. Whiteside. It's something like an awful lot of hooey. But the journal is my father's paper. It's kind of a sentimental point of thing. So I'd like to carry on where you left off. So you own the paper? That's right. So this apocalyptic editor, this dread journalist, is. You yourself? In a word, yes. I see. In the future, Sherry, let me know when you don't want to talk to somebody. I'll usher them right in. Now, young man, I assume you've written that novel? No, I've written that play. Ah, yes. Well, I won't be reading it. Ah, uh, say, my eyes spot a box of candy. Will you bring it to me, please? The problem is, Mr. Whiteside, that your being in this town comes under the heading of news. Trying to be the biggest news since the Depression. So I've just got to get the story. Oh, pecan butternut cook. Come on, You mustn't eat candy, Mr. Whiteside. It's very bad for you. Miss <laughs> Queen, my great aunt Jennifer ate a box of chocolate every day of her life. She lived until she was 102, and when she was dead for three days, she looked better then than you do now. <laughs> what were you saying? I can at least support to my readers that chivalry is not yet dead. Ah, oh, we won't discuss it. Now, say, what would you like to know? Well, how about a brief talk on famous murders? Your authority on murders is fine art. Mm. Young men, when I talk about murder, I get paid for it. I made more off the Snyder Bray case than the lawyers did, so don't expect to get it out of me for free. Well, man, what do you think of Mezzalia? How long are you staying here? Where are you going? Things like that. Very well. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, Mezzalia is a town of irresistible. 